Hello and welcome back to my channel, Craft Time by Casey. I'm Casey and today we will be making these four bracelets. Um, the vast majority of the parts came from February 2022's Bargain Bead Box. Um, I get the monthly subscription and I enjoyed making these bracelets. It was a lot of fun and if you would like to see how these bracelets came about, then stay tuned. All right, so here we go. Um, I already have my first bracelet laid out, but I'll go through some of the stuff that, um, some of the other things that I have and what tools I will be using today. So I will only be using the clasps that came in the February 20, uh, 2022 bargain bead box. And these are the toggle clasps. They have the engravings on them on both the uh, on both parts, the circle and the bar part. So these will be the only clasps I'm using today. And I also have um, the only things that came out of my stash for the most part um, will be the findings. Of course, the crimp tubes, the crimp covers, jump rings, and the um, wire guardians. Um, I went ahead and laid them out because honestly, at this point, I don't know how many bracelets I'm gonna be making today. Um, I will be making up to five. And of course, you guys on the video will be coming from the completed uh, bracelets. So at this point, you know more than me. I like creating on the fly. So the tools that I will be using today, I'll be using my crimping pliers, of course, for the crimp tubes and the clasps at the end. And I will be using my fine point cutters and I will be using my two sets of chain nose pliers. And for this first bracelet, I am using these color spectrum, rainbow color spectrum bicones that came in the uh, bead box for February. I am also using these round beads that have kind of a natural stone finish to them, a luster finish. Really enjoy these beads. I also have one of the chevron faceted finished beads, and that's going to be the center point of this particular bracelet. And then I have some rondelles, the, also the color spectrum um, finish on them. It's, I will be using Beadalong, Beadalon uh, 49 strand wire. I will be using this for each one of them. And as you can see, it calls for a number two crimp tube, which is what I have here uh, for the finish. And I get the 100 foot one, which I believe I ordered off of Amazon. In the stores, I think the biggest you can get is 30. At least that's all that I've seen. So since I go through so much of it, I always try to get the bigger ones. So the way I um, usually make my bracelets, um, I tend to make them about seven and a half inches between seven and seven and a half. So when I cut the wire, um, usually I have it between um, 10 to 12 inches so that I have enough space on either end to do the uh, closings, the clasps. So here's how I'm going to start this bracelet. So I have the end of my wire here. I'm going to pick up my crimp tube, put it on the end of the wire. Then I'm going to put my jump ring on the end of the wire. And then I'm going to get the wire guardian and I'm gonna put that through one end and I'm going to fold it over and put it through the other end and then pull that through. Then I'm gonna have the jump ring go up in that wire guardian, and I'm gonna put the other end of that wire through the crimp tube. I know it seems like I have a huge tail, but I'm gonna fix that. So I like to take my chain nose pliers and very, very lightly close 
that wire guardian. All right, so just like that, where it's kind of angled, closed, um, so it rests right up against, so it rests right up against that uh, crimp tube right there. All right, so now, because I don't want that huge tail, I'm gonna pull it down a little bit. And here I will be getting my crimping pliers. So I will use that second divot in the crimping pliers and I will smash it. And I get that nice little taco shape and then turn it to the side and use that second divot in the crimping pliers, pull it down. And then I like to take it a step further and use that flat point on the crimping wires and use that to give it a final kind of smash. And that way it's nice and tight. I'm going to take my crimp cover and I'm going to put that crimp cover right over that crimp tube, just like that. I will take my chain nose pliers and smash that crimp cover right over that crimp tube. And this is another part where you want to be gentle, kind of take your time. It's not something you want to just go in there and, you know, smash it. But you're lightly smashing it. All right. So there you have it. That's a pretty secure ending right there. And that crimp cover kind of looks like that first bead in the bracelet. So now at this point, it's just stringing in the pattern that you have. Here we go. I'm gonna start on one end and go to the other. Got the bicone and then the round, and then we're going back and forth several times. All right, so now you wanna go back to that beginning and make sure that all of the pieces of that tail are going into the beads, the first few beads. And one thing I liked about this design when I was putting it together is that the hole in this bead is a little wide. It's a little bigger than a normal well, I hate the word normal, but it's a little wider um, hole for the center of this bead. So I like that these bicones kind of come to a point, so to speak, where they can loosely go into the wider hole of the bead. All right, so this is how the end of it looks, and I'm gonna do the center design, and then this exact design will be on the other end. Um, just this kind of back and forth between the bicone and the color spectrum bead. I have this tiny two millimeter spacer bead. And this one is the translucent color spectrum one. Here's a smaller round spacer bead. And then I have one of the rondelles. On this chevron one, I'm using bead caps. So I have a bead cap open up, chevron bead, bead cap open down. All right. And then I'm going back to the rondelle. Spacer, translucent, color spectrum, tiny spacer. So now, this is what the pattern looks like so far. You've got that design that we had in the beginning, the back and forth, and then the center of the bracelet. And now, 
we're going to do this exact same thing that we did at the beginning on the other side and I'll meet back up when we get to the closure. So now we have the entire bracelet um, strung as far as the beads go. So we have to close the other end and then add the clasp. All right, I'm gonna put that crimp tube on the other side. And then I'm gonna have the jump ring, just like that. And I can go ahead and let that fall for now. I'm gonna get the wire guardian going through one end of that wire guardian. back through the other. And I'll go ahead and say the reason I use wire guardians is because they just add a little extra security. If you don't have them, you can certainly just string the um, clasp onto the end of this wire. It's plenty strong enough to hold it. Um, I just like to add that little extra to make sure that the jewelry lasts a little bit longer. So I'll go ahead and pull it down. And I'm going to make sure the jump ring goes back up inside that wire guardian. And I've got a pretty big tail, so I'm probably going to cut some of this off to make it just a little bit easier to work with. And actually, you know what? I'll go ahead and do that. Go. So I'm going to put the end of this wire back through. I'll go back up and make sure that the tail over here is not sticking out. No spacing in between. So just like on the other side, I'm going to be very gentle with my chain nose pliers and slightly close that wire guardian. All right. And now I'm going to go ahead and crimp this other side. So I'm going to take my crimping pliers, go into that second divot, give it a good smash, Got the taco shape. Now I'm going to turn it on its side. Smash it again. And just like the other side, I'm going to take that flat part and give it an extra smash so that it's nice and secure. I'm going to get my fine point cutters and get up there as close as I can. Cut that tail off, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the crimp cover. So I have the crimp cover. And I'm going to put it right over that crimp tube, just like that. And then just like the other one, you don't want to go in real heavy handed. Kind of manipulate it a little bit and smash it. There you go. Close it just a little bit more. All right, so then you have the other side. So now the ends match and it looks like it starts off with that nice silver bead. So now we have our bracelet, but we just have to put the clasp on. So I'm going to take that jump ring, open it, put the clasp in one, and close it nice and snug. Go to the other side.
open and we are adding a bar. And close. So there we go. And there's our first bracelet. On to the next. So here is the end closure. It looks like it ends with a little silver bead. For this one, we're using the natural stone beads that came in it. And I absolutely love that they are all different. Um, different kind of markings on them. And I just absolutely love, absolutely love it. So I'm going to use these tiny rondelles on either end, um, which will help with the toggle clasp. Anytime you're using kind of bigger beads, um, with a bracelet, you want to make sure the ones on the end are small so that it will fit through the toggle clasp. So for those tiny rondelles, I'm going to go ahead and get as close as I can and cut off that tail. That's still going to be very secure. Three of the little rondelles. On the end. I'm going to take it all the way to the end, just like that. And then for the pattern with the stones, I'm going to go every other bead with the bead cap. So I'm going to start off with a bead cap open up, bead, and then bead cap down. And then I'm gonna have just a bead cap by itself. Just like that. And then I'm going to have the bead cap open up. Bead. Bead cap open down. and then bead by itself. So you can see that pattern where even though you don't have the bead cap surrounding every bead, it still gives the effect of having a bead cap in between every bead. So we'll continue this pattern all the way till the other end. So there you have it. There is the entire bracelet without the end on it. So now we are going to be closing it up on the other end. So now we are going to put on the clasp. I'm gonna go for that jump ring on one end, just like that. The pliers with the other, open the jump ring. one side of the clasp and there you go other side you gonna grab the bar Just like that. And there is our second bracelet. On to the next. All right, on to our third bracelet. And for this one, I will be using primarily these color spectrum rondelles. And then the one bead in the center is going to be the bead that has almost, a, I guess, tribal like tribal lines in the middle, um, but also that color spectrum, very, very pretty. 
For this one, I'm going to be using the bead caps that came in the bead box. And I will be using spacer beads from my own stash. All right, so we have the ending, or I should say the beginning, nice and secure. And now we are going to start stringing. So I will show you one side up to the middle and then skip to the end. So for the beginning, just like the last one, I am going to be using the little rondelle. Put that right on the end. And then I'm going to be going in an alternating pattern. Rondelle, spacer, rondelle, spacer, rondelle. So move these all to the end. And I did not cut off the tail, so I will go ahead and do that really quickly. I'm going to get as close as I can and cut that off so that goes right up against that. And then that is the end with the little rondelle into the big rondelles. And then we're going to alternate the bead caps again. Bead cap up, rondelle. bead cap down and then a rondelle without a bead cap bead cap up rondelle bead cap down rondelle without a bead cap and as you can see when you go down to the bottom it gives the look of having a bead cap in between every bead. So we have bead cap open, rondelle, bead cap down, rondelle by itself. And that is one side of this bracelet. And now we're going to do that center bead so we have bead cap open, then we have this center bead, bead cap down, just like this. So then we're going to do this exact same thing in reverse the other way. So I will meet you at the end. So here we go. We have both sides set up the exact same way down to the little rondelle at the end and the center bead in the center. So this is what it should look like when you are done stringing it. Now I will do the closing and then I will meet back with you. All right, so now we have the closing of this bracelet. So here we go. We're going to add the clasp very quickly. So there is the finished bracelet. Bracelet number three. Now, moving on to the next one. So here is the fourth and final bracelet for this video. I've already secured the beginning of this bracelet. All right, so I'm going to begin by putting the small rondelle all the way up to the front. And then it's just going to be alternating these beads. So we have bead and then spacer. Bead and then spacer. I will be using nine beads and spacers for this section. And of course the beads are from the bead box and the spacers are from my own stash. This part is just a really simple alternating. All right, so here is one end of this bracelet. 
And then the center piece that I will be putting on open bead cap and then this time we are going to be using the deep purple round beads that came in the bead box and then bead and then close bead cap just like that and then in the middle in between each large one we're going to put another small round and then we will have open bead cap, deep purple bead, close bead cap, and then small round in between. Um, open bead cap, large dark purple close bead cap so here is it here it is through the center so now I'm going to do this exact same pattern right here on the other side and then I'll meet back up with you at the end and there you go there is the fourth bracelet so here are all four of the bracelets. Um, I went ahead and put all four of them on. Um, I do think they stack quite nicely. The beads are, uh, when you have the same color pattern, like all the purple and the silver, um, I really, I just think they go really well. They complement each other. And very rarely uh, when I wear a bracelet do I wear one. <laughs> Usually I wear several bracelets at once or I'll wear one multi-strand bracelet. So here you go. Um, I will set them up on my display um, to kind of show them all laid out. All right, so here are the final four bracelets all laid out. I really like the way that they came out. Very happy with them. And... I gotta say, they are very stackable. They go well together. You could also wear them separately. Um, I do, I like the way they came out. So if you liked this video and you'd like to see other videos like this, um, along with unboxings and other inspiration for jewelry making, uh, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Um, give me a like, leave a comment. Tell me what you thought. What do you think of these bracelets? Um, did they inspire you or did you have, you know, different ideas? Let me know. I love reading your comments. You guys are so, so kind and I greatly appreciate every single comment that I read and I definitely look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.